Hi friends, and welcome to Tiny Technical Tutorials, where we do bite-sized lessons for today's tech. In this video, I'm going to show you five Microsoft Excel hacks to make you more productive. The first hack is called Flash Fill. This is a really handy shortcut where Excel will automatically fill in data once it recognizes a pattern. Let me show you an example. Here in columns A and B, we have first name and last name. But let's say that you need to concatenate or combine those for some reason. Let's add a new column here. Column C, we'll call this full name. And what I could do is start typing in first name and last name here, go to the next cell, and continue like that. But you'll see that Excel has given you this nice sort of autocomplete option where it's done the rest of the work for you. And if you're happy with this, all you have to do is hit the tab key and everything's filled in for you automatically. Pretty cool, huh? Let's try another pattern here. I'll insert a new column. And here we'll call this location, which is going to be the city and state combined with a comma in between them. So we'll do the same thing, start typing this in, rapid city, comma SD, go down to the next row, Flagstaff, and you'll see there again, Excel has recognized there's a pattern. And so if I hit the tab key, all of that will be filled in for me. The pattern recognition also works for numbers. So maybe something over here, whatever the number is, but let's say that you've got a two, a three, and a four. If you just select those, you can drag this down and it'll automatically add one to each of those. You could also do a two, a four, a six, and it should recognize that pattern as well. If you drag this down, you'll see it's added two there and so on. So lots of really cool pattern recognition things that you can do to autofill your data. Okay, on to hack number two, which has to do with our format painter. You might know about the format painter in general, but I want to show you one really handy shortcut to make it even more powerful. Here we have some data about different products that we sell, and perhaps we want to add some formatting here to the category name. So I'll just do a few things. Let's say we merge and center this, oh, but maybe over to the right a little bit and maybe to the top of the cell, there we go. Perhaps we want this to be bold. Actually, I like that on the left a little bit better. We'll put that back over there. And maybe we'll make this sort of a light blue shade. And then going down here to this next one for road bikes, we'll do the same thing. Add a few different format options here. We'll bold it. Maybe this one we want to be a light green. And perhaps we want to just alternate these all the way down the spreadsheet. So I could do that manually but Format Painter makes it super easy. You might know that you can choose this here, go to the Format Painter, and then paint that onto the next thing here. And that'll work just fine, but if you have a huge amount of data and a really large spreadsheet, this trick I'm about to show you really comes in handy. What you want to do, again, select the thing that you want to paint from, and rather than clicking Format Painter just once, double click it, and then you can paint multiple times. So we'll go down to the touring bikes, so we'll hit the category after that, the category after that, and you'll see that I'm just painting this on without having to go back up and click on the format painter. So it lets you apply a format multiple times. I just hit the escape button there. Let's go back up and pick up this green one here, double clicking the format painter so I can paint this on multiple times. We'll do this over handlebars, brakes, and pedals. There you go, that was pretty easy. I just hit escape again. The same works for formatting of your cells. So over here in column E, we've got dates. And maybe I want to change the format of this date. I'll select format cells and we'll choose date. Maybe the format I want is this one here. I'll say OK. Now we could just select the whole column and make everything in there the same format. But maybe you've got this format and you just want this on a few different things. So once again, come up to your Format Painter, double click, and then you can just paint this on to all the other cells here without having to go back and grab the Format Painter again. So that's a handy tip. Just double click the Format Painter and then you can apply it multiple places and save yourself some clicks. Okay, moving on to hack number three. Let's talk about how to insert multiple rows or columns. Let's say that you work for this company and you've recently added, say, 10 new mountain bikes to your product catalog. And you need to put those right in here. So what you could do is just right click and insert 10 more rows, but that's a little tedious, especially if you needed to insert something like 100 rows. 
What you can do instead is just select 10 rows here, and then right click and say insert, and that'll insert the 10 empty rows, rather than doing it one at a time. So I just did a control Z to undo that. The same applies to columns. So maybe you need to insert several columns to the left of this one, rather than right clicking and inserting multiple times, you can just select multiple columns here, and then do your right click, insert, and there's the multiple columns. So super easy. All right, up to hack number four. Let's talk about how to instantly resize a row or a column so that it fits the text. So here in column C, we've got a lot of text and we can't really see it all. Now we could drag this out a little bit. I've just got my mouse here selecting it, dragging it out. But sometimes it's hard to see and if you've got a whole bunch of rows here, maybe as you scroll down, you realize that some text is longer than others. One really quick way to do this, let's say you were back here, is just to hover until you get this little handle on the mouse cursor and then double click it, just like that. And that'll expand the column so that all of the text is visible in any of the cells there. Okay, let's try that in column B. You'll see in column B, we've got a little bit of text that's cut off here, but if I wanna know exactly the right size for that, I can just, again, hover over here until my mouse turns into this little handle, double click it, and then it'll resize so that all of that text is visible all the way down these rows. Okay, the fifth and final hack is how to freeze rows and columns. This is a really common thing to need to do, but it can sometimes be a little bit confusing. So here on this tab, focus on the top row, row one. As I'm working on this spreadsheet, you'll see there's a lot of different rows down here. Maybe I'm entering data all the way down here, and I can't remember what the name of these columns are. In other words, I can't see the header that's right up here in the first row. So what I can do, and I'm first gonna show you a gotcha that maybe you've done in the past. You're down here and you think, oh gosh, I wish I knew what row that was on the very top. And so you come up to view, freeze panes, and you freeze the top row. But then as you're working here, you still don't see that top row with the headers. You actually see this row 22, the Touring 3000 blue, because that's the row that was visible when you froze the row. This has happened to me a few times and it always throws me off. So let's undo that, we'll unfreeze panes. If you wanna freeze the top row, make sure that's the row that's visible when you do that. It doesn't matter where your mouse is, just make sure it's visible. And then say, freeze top row. And now that top row will be visible as you're working down the spreadsheet. Okay, I'm gonna undo that, so we'll start from scratch. The same applies to your columns. So we've got column A here with the different category names, but maybe I'm all the way over here working on, if I scroll over, I'm over here in column E, let's say, or column D, and I don't remember what the category name was because it was all the way over in column A. So once again, if I were to freeze the first column here, it's gonna freeze whatever is the first thing visible, which in this case is gonna be column D. And that's not gonna do me much good. I wanna see column A, so let me undo that. Unfreeze panes, scroll over so that column A is what's visible. Your mouse doesn't have to be in there, but it has to be the first visible column. And then we'll say freeze first column. And now if I'm over here working over to the right, you'll see that column's frozen for me. All right, I'm gonna undo that by saying unfreeze panes. And then the final option is to freeze rows and columns that aren't necessarily the first row or the first column. So let's say for whatever reason, you wanna freeze on this row and this column right here. So what you do is put your mouse just below and just to the right of what you wanna freeze. So in this case, that's going to be cell C9. And then up here, I'll say freeze panes. And you'll see it even gives you a note there based on current selection. So it's gonna freeze the thing just to the top of where your mouse is and just to the left of where your mouse is. We'll click that. And now you'll see if I scroll down, we're frozen there at row eight. And if I scroll over, we're frozen there at column B. So you can freeze it any place you want. Usually the first row and first columns are the most common ways to do that, but you can do that in any other place in the spreadsheet as well. And there you have it, five Microsoft Excel hacks to make you more productive. If you found the content valuable, we always appreciate likes, subscribes, and shares.